Hey, 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 Fit Mama, Jen Oliver here, your host of the Fit Mama podcast. This is the work in to your workout. Fit Mama, welcome to today's episode. I am so excited, as I am every episode. I realized that recently that I say that every time, probably, because I'm really, really excited. And I get so pumped to share the stuff that I do with you, whether it's an interview with an expert in their area or just a great human. Over the next year, over the next six months, I mean, I have so many great interviews coming your way. I am so pumped to share each of these with you. I am also inviting some really cool people on my podcast that are moms, really good friends of mine, and family members. I am inviting my sister, my sister-in-law onto the podcast. It is going to be so fun. And unfortunately, that is not today's episode. Today, you got me and I am so pumped to share with you today this idea of emotional fitness. Emotional fitness. I have been talking about it now for the better part of years. And it's really being the title of a lot of interviews and topics that I'm speaking on lately. And the reason why I love talking about emotional fitness is because what I've realized in the last five years of doing Fit Mama Global, talking to Fit Mamas all over the world, traveling the world, checking out everything and reading up on all things mind and body. You know, I will have you know, I do not read fiction books. And though I wish, and I'm often, you know, laughed at by my family because I really don't read anything other than help books, self-help books, research out the yin yang books and books and articles and more of them. And my family laughs at me because, you know, they all love books and I really like the idea of liking books, but I could read day and night on books that are nonfiction. And You know, one day I see myself reading more fiction books, but in the meantime, I literally read five books a week on nonfiction topics that relate to health, mind, body, soul, connection, depth, spirituality, and these sort of deeper topics that not many people are talking about actually always bring me back to emotional fitness. And that is the idea that you are fit in a way where you are responding to life and the emotions that come up and life as it throws things in your way, which it does, versus reacting, which is blowing, you know, blowing your top, yelling or freaking out, screaming, starting to get, you know, anxiety attack, all the things that If you're having that, that's not, you're not bad and there's no judgment, but this is an area where emotional fitness, it's like training at the gym to build your muscles and your heart, training the emotional aspects of your life, because what's actually happening for most of us, and I say us because I know I'm included in this, is that as we go through our life, and we're wanting to get fit, we're wanting to lose weight, we want to get, you know, trim, we want to look good, we want to look like the Instagram people, or we just want to feel good in our life. Why are we not feeling good, right? Life is good, it can be good. Why are we so feeling crappy? Why are we tired to the point where we don't want to get out of bed in the morning? Or we don't want to go to sleep at night, right? There's so much going on, and we think we have to change something really big in our environment. Oh my gosh, I have to stop eating this. I have to stop drinking coffee. I have to start going to gym every day. But it isn't related to that. That's a symptom. I mean, it would be great if you went to the gym every day. I'm not going to knock it. But is that the solution? Not necessarily. Because your issues, if you will call them that, your emotional outbursts, your stresses, your low level vibration emotions such as scarcity and feelings of non-worthiness this will never happen for me I'm not worthy I always mess up this always happens to me 
if you're finding there's language like always or never or not enough, or you're feeling not enough or scarcity around money, food, people, connected relationships, support, love, any of those things. If you're feeling a lack in those areas, it's emotional fitness that is going to have the most positive benefits for you. And what I mean by that is getting to the point where you are responding instead of reacting. Because when you're responding, you are observing, you're aware, you're connecting to what's really going on right now. Because what often happens when we are growing up and we're young, as we grow and then we get older, what we're doing today often is playing out an old pattern, an old thing that we did or experienced and we had no control over, we felt stuck or we were traumatized in some way, physically, emotionally, sexually, however, these leave imprints on our bodies and our minds and we rethink them and new happenings around us play into these old experiences or these old stories and it's over and over that we really relive the past and we blow up or we have outbursts or we don't we think we don't like certain things i mean i was recently having this conversation with some friends and you know we were kind of talking about uh, blow jobs of all things, which is kind of funny. So anyway, that's a pretty, you know, well, TMI all of a sudden, but like we were, we were talking about blow jobs. We were talking about s- swallowing versus spitting and that experience of giving a blow job. Do you like it? You know, we were talking about gagging or not or whatever. And essentially what I realized after sort of observing the answers that everybody had and the feelings that were coming up and you know how we react to things like that it may not be a reaction to what's really going on in your current situation in your current relationship so for example if you know you are turned off by certain things, or you don't want to do certain things, or you always play into these same roles where you're cleaning up after everybody, you're doing everything for everybody, you get into this role where that's what you did when you were younger to keep the peace or to make things function. And emotional fitness is really about this power that you have within you. You can harness this power within you, which is emotional fitness, which is bringing you to a place where you can handle your life. You actually can handle it. And emotional fitness isn't one thing, but it is handling your life. It's being in a place of abundance. It's feeling that resilience in moments that feel scary and hard and old because what we're doing oftentimes is reacting to old experiences and instead of being here now and responding to the husband friend wife girl daughter boy son whoever in front of us right now we're reacting out of an old pattern And we're not really there now. So for example, with the blowjobs example, right? We're not there right now. And in this moment, if we swallowed and if we were really connected and if we were having the time of our life catering to our person or having the time of our life, our person catering to us and we can fully surrender and enjoy it, if we can do that, then we just might love that experience, enjoy that experience, experience that experience. Because oftentimes we think we're going to like or hate a certain thing. But if we're in a growth mindset, which if you don't know what that is, please Google it. It is a place where you are open 
right? You're open. You're not saying words like always. This always happens to me. I never make this or that. I don't get promotions. I never win. Whatever it is, that is a fixed mindset and you are not leaving it open for growth and for change and for opportunity. So emotional fitness is really a product of how we react or respond to our thoughts and our feelings and our experiences because it's all about our perception of our experiences, whether that thing is deemed positive or negative, whether we're scared or not scared, whether we're happy or not happy. And for me, right now I'm packing up my house, I'm labeling boxes, I'm, it's all kinds of crazy what is going on for me, and yet it's not a bad experience. It's actually fun. Not only because I'm going somewhere fun and I'm going global and I'm, you know, I'm going to be nomadic for a bit and I'm going to be, you know, we bought a house, so I'm building a backyard, which is super fun. But it's also because I'm experiencing it now. I'm not imagining all the other moves I've had and how awful those experiences were and how much they sucked and how much I hate moving in general and how much packing and unpacking sucks because, oh, those things Fit mama, we know they are true, but I'm not dwelling on those. Emotional fitness for me in this moment is what am I getting done each day? What else can I do to support myself? Okay, I'd like to go on walks and get in nature every day. Okay, I need to fuel myself. Okay, I need to hydrate myself because I love the way I feel when I'm peeing every 30 minutes and I'm energized, right? And this is a personal leadership This is a personal leadership opportunity. Any shit that's going on in your life, any old traumas that are still affecting you today, which let's be honest, almost all of our lives are made up of dealing with old traumas, experiencing them over again, and then labeling them something new that is today's problem, right? I mean, I minimize my time spent with what I would label negative Nancy. And when I'm around someone who is a quote unquote negative Nancy, who's only dwelling on the crappy things, who's finding an issue with everything, who's living in low self-esteem, scarcity over, there's not enough time, there's not enough energy, there's not enough life to be lived, or I'm not living mine, I'm simply existing These are not the vibes I like to find myself in because I truly look for people who are emotionally fit. People who are not trying to put other people down to make themselves feel better in that moment. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm around people who they make fun of other people or they cut up other people or they point out flaws in other people or they want to talk about other people. And all that stems from being emotionally unfit, having your childhood traumas and the stories that evolved from them become your current day dramas, if you will. And it significantly impacts your day-to-day life, whether you do or don't go to the gym, whether you do or don't eat healthy, whether you do or don't wash your hair, wash your face, take care of yourself, whether you do or don't decorate your home, take pride in your space, whether you do or don't clean your space. There's so many aspects of your life and activities of daily living, what pains you feel, what addictions you're experiencing at this time, what you're leaning on, what you're reaching for, your emotional fitness significantly impacts all these aspects of your life, Fit Mama. So keeping your awareness in the now, in the now going, wow, I feel stressed right now. Okay, what do I feel stressed about? And starting to dissect it in a way where you can take action, not dwell on the issues, right? And this is where the transformation lies in the responding to the now, not reacting to the past. 
I mean, for me, we bought a house. We bought a house in a different country than we live in right now. So it was extremely scary. It was extremely different. I've never done that. It was a lot of paperwork. It was a lot of signatures. It was a lot of what could have been stress. And at the end of the day, all I did was do one thing at a time, read one document at a time, listen to one voicemail, call one person back, take care of one box, pack up one bag, call one client and do all the rest of the things that I needed to do in between each of those other things, i.e. work, and all the rest, because all I could do was one thing at a time. And when I found myself doing the spiral, the downward spiral into emotional drama, which I've been known to do, and if you know me, you've seen that, I will very much stress myself out and start to think about all the things I have to do. And I watched my husband do the same thing. We were both overwhelmed by this sheer amount of things that needed to get done to follow through on what we really wanted. But was it worth it? And is it worth it? Because it's going to be ongoing for the next year, probably. Yes, it is. What is it going to take for us to manage it, handle it, Yeah, there's fitness. There's going to the gym. Right now, we just closed up one of our memberships. We don't have another gym we're going to, but it's gorgeous out. So we've been working out in our home gym while we pack. Well, you know, don't pack it up yet. We have been going outside, running, biking, walking, swimming, whatever we can, all the rest of the things every day. Keeping ourselves fit is absolutely a part of it. Can we go and only focus on packing our house all day, every day and only working in between that? Yes, we can. Are we going to run out of steam? Yes, we are. So there's a physical fitness aspect that we need to tend to. Absolutely. And you know, I love to talk about that. And if you're following me on Instagram at love Jen Oliver, you know, I am always posting about our fitness adventures, our fun. And we are also going to be posting more, my husband and I on at the Oliver's travel, because the Oliver's are going traveling and we're going to be posting some pics. We're going to be having some fun with our girls and we are going to be traveling and we love to share that stuff. We follow a lot of people who inspire us, who love to travel, who love love, who love health and wellness, mind, body and spirit, all the good stuff, because that's what keeps us inspired is being around positive, highly emotional fit people who aren't using old traumas and dramas as their current They're not bringing that into the present. They're going how things can be different and how can things be different and asking yourself those questions are the types of things that bring you into a place of true emotional fitness. So when you are aligning your desires with living a certain way or having a certain lifestyle or dealing with the crap that is in your current life, managing it, living a happy life, even in the face of any of those traumas and dramas. Because life, if you're really in the moment, there is no thing that needs you to worry about it. You can just be there. And when you ask yourself questions like, how can things be different? Or how can things be even better than this? If you stay in a place of gratitude and thankfulness for what you have and you're still open to what's possible without making excuses and falling back into old patterns and stories, anything's possible for you, Fit Mama. And I know that because I see it happen every day with my clients and it's freaking awesome. Like awesome, awesome. Some of the things that my clients are telling me they're doing or that they're experiencing or that they're feeling are things that they never thought possible for them around freedom. And I don't think it's a coincidence that one of my number one values is freedom. I want to feel freedom that I don't feel stuck in my life. I don't need a vacation from my life. I don't need a vacation from my vacation because I surround myself with people who fill me up. I surround myself with experiences that fill me up. 
I mean, for me, I do breathing exercises. I do present moment awareness, concentration, core connection every single day, which reminds me, I'm actually just leaving my house in about 10 minutes to go to my Pilates, which I have been doing two times a week, every single week that I haven't been traveling since 2015 at Fit Mama. Right now, as of this date, that is over four years. And that started with none other than Renati, Renati's, Pilates with Renee. Pilates with Renee, which again apparently is Renati's in my short form version of my head. So Pilates with Renee, she's on an episode of the Fit Mama podcast. If you search online, Pilates with Renee. I'm just going to meet her in 15 minutes. I am so excited to be here with her because, or be with her in the Pilates because she's taught me so much. She is always there for me when I have my appointments, as she does so well punctually. And whenever I show up, I connect to my core. She has me breathing. She cues my pelvic floor, my TVA. She's like, turn on those glutes. Think about this. Think about that. Feel this. Do you notice that? Breathe this way. Inhale. Exhale. I mean, that's two times a week for an hour that I do that. But on top of that, I do breathing every single morning, every single evening. It wakes up my core. It allows me to bend. It allows me to face the day and approach my family and friends and clients with so much love, so much presence and I am there for them. And for me, that's emotional fitness. And that's me aligning with my physical. How can I take care of myself? Because this body, I'd like it to last. It only has one heart and it only has one set of lungs. It only has these legs. And when I berate them and treat them not well, that doesn't serve me well. So I How can I feel good emotionally about this physical being that is very helpful? Then the mental side, how do my thoughts affect my physical health? In every way, Fit Mama, in every way. Your thoughts affect your physical health in every single way. Okay, so embody that and don't let something slip by your consciousness. And this is something that Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about. And he's going on the Ultimate Health Podcast soon. I don't know if I'm allowed to leak that, but I am because I'm super excited. So any Ultimate Health Podcast lovers here, Dr. Joe D is going to be on there. I have been a fan for so many years. I write about him in the Love Fit Mama way ad nauseum. And Jesse, Dr. Jesse Chappis and Marnie Wasserman from the Ultimate Health Podcast have become such good friends of mine here in Windsor, which I'm sad, sad, sad beyond to leave some of my Windsor family, like friends, Marnie Wasserman, Dr. Jesse Chappis. I have my girl, Heather Chauvin from the Mom is in Control podcast, who I freaking love. And I have such good friends here because they're these kind of positive highly emotional fit, highly aware and awake people who are not trying to cut other people down to rise themselves up. They rise naturally because of who they are and they're doing it by raising other people up. And they have Dr. Joe D on there, which is so fun. I remember introducing them to them. I remember telling them all about him and they soon then after looked into him and he is such a game changer. So I can't wait for what they bring out because the things they bring out on their podcast are not what they do in all the other interviews. And when you follow someone like Joe Dispenza, you can YouTube him and you will find all his stuff. And there's so many overlaps, which allows you to really understand the content But it also is somewhat repetitive and you hear the same stories over and over. And I can just see that they're going to bring out some really cool stuff from him. So I'm excited for that episode. And what he says, and this is why I bring him up, is thoughts become things. And he's not the first to say that, but he is the first to really help us embody that in a way where he teaches you techniques, breathing techniques, mindful techniques, meditation techniques, and tools to allow you to not let thoughts pass through your consciousness that you don't want to happen. 
And this is really important because so many of us do this thing called catastrophizing where we go, oh, imagine this happened to our child, to us, to someone we love. Imagine this happened. Imagine I lost my job. Imagine I had no food. Imagine I had my roof caved in. We think of all these negative things and then we go spiral into this negative catastrophizing, imagining all that could go wrong. And what Dr. Joe D in all of his research has shown us is that this opens up this portal, almost this allowing for it to actually enter into your life because what you visualize, what you imagine comes true. And that's just because thoughts become things. That's because you're in a vibration of imagining these things. And if that's a really low vibration and it's a lot of scarcity and anxiety and fear, negativity and hopelessness, that's what you attract. That's what you bring more of. And that's what you actually create through your thoughts, you start to see people around you who are also in that scarcity that confirms, oh yeah, there isn't enough money. There isn't enough time. Whoa, everybody around me is stressed out. I must have to be stressed out too. My life must be stressful. People put stuff on us. And that is just natural because that's what they learned. And that's what a lot of us do to cope with a lot of the crap that was put on us, oftentimes by parents, older people, coaches, friends, you know, priests, whomever, we take on other people's baggage because we are empathic beings and we naturally feel as children that it's our fault, it's our problem, we must have asked for this, we must have provoked this, we must be able to blame for this. I mean, I'm a product of divorced parents. I'm a product of a new Brady Bunch style family where my mom got remarried to my stepdad, who they've been married now almost 25 years, and he has two children. And, you know, at any different time and stage in our life, we've all been estranged from each other, whether it was we didn't talk to my dad, he didn't talk to his children, we didn't talk to his children, we now talk to his, you know, one of his children, and then we have, you know, this is the dynamic of our family, and this leaves imprints on our being, on how we see the world, on how we partner with our partner now, and how we interact with all the people in our lives. And if we bring all that trauma in and create it into today's drama, we just create more of that. Instead of surrounding ourselves with people who lift us up, who are also dreaming in technicolor and making things possible. And that is what I love, is that anything is possible. And that's the beauty of being emotionally fit, is that you're here now, in this moment, in this life, experiencing it as it is. And if it sucks, it sucks. But you're here to experience it. You breathe in and out multiple times on a daily basis. And the more connected to your breathing you can be, Fit Mama, the more you experience the joy that's available to you right now. Because if our thoughts are always thinking about those negative past experiences, all that happens is that we feel that stress and that pretty much dictates our life and how we experience it. So this is about realizing this and no judgment and then saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to start responding to what's going on right now and not reacting to what this means because of the story that I'm creating and all the drama that I want to live through. Because actually, oftentimes we're addicted to our drama. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but I've been doing a lot of research now on addiction. And uh, it's interesting because all of us have these addictions and addictive patterns. And I see it even with my kids, the sort of things that they gravitate towards when they have uncomfortable feelings. And, you know, my, my little, my older one, you know, when the little one kind of bugs her or whatever, or she feels kind of out of control or doesn't have, you know, opportunity to do what she wants to do because her sister is being this way or that way, you know, she naturally, and she's never witnessed this, you know, she goes to our room, she slams the door, she's frustrated, she, you know, she yells, or she kind of just has this emotional release in the physical way, which is, you know, anger or whatever, which is great. And I really encourage her to feel you know, breathe in that moment and allow that energy to dissipate because we talk about emotion as energy in motion. And when we can just leave it as that, and when we cannot create it into drama and then experience it through, you know, taking or lashing out on someone else or taking it out on someone else, you know, responding instead of reacting 
That is emotional strengthening, emotional fitness. That's strengthening that muscle of willpower, self-regulation, you know, self-control. And it's not about quelching your feelings and crushing your, you know, what you're really meant to feel in the spectrum of feelings. But it's like, okay, I'm sad AF right now. What do I need to do to process that? Is it going into a room and yelling and screaming? Is it punching a pillow over and over until I realize I'm hurting my arm? Is it going to a boxing class and doing kickboxing so you can get that aggression out? What is it for you? For me, it's breathing. For me, breathing connects me back to now. I do a really deep inhale, which is how I got through my labors. It was all breathing and I had incredibly quick and sort of pain-free. It was painful. I remember squeezing people's hands and freaking out, but it was quick and painless in the way that I breathed through it and I got through it and I knew I could do it. And I had the tools and the people around me to support me through it. And that was emotional fitness. Even back then, my daughter is now eight. I was emotionally fit back then. And did I have issues? Do I still have issues? Yes, I do. It doesn't mean you're void of issues. It means that you are in that present moment. You're utilizing what's going on right now. You're staying open and curious to what's happening right now. And you're processing it and then responding. In that moment, I could have freaked out. I could have been like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm in labor and my husband isn't home yet. My midwife isn't here yet. I was free. I could have freaked out and I was kind of freaking out. And That made the pain worse. And what I did was inhaling, breathing, whether it's through your nose, through your mouth, whatever method feels right in the moment, that is your magical gateway, Fit Mama, to the miracles that are possible in this moment, which is feeling no pain, feeling no drama, creating no trauma or recreating no trauma because you're just here now. And if you are safe, which if you aren't in a safe situation, get yourself there, please ASAP. But most of us are in a safe situation. And then we create the hormones of stress over and over and over. And we live by the hormones of stress. We become addicted to the hormones of stress and it becomes our go-to instead of the tools we know are possible for us. We know are at our fingertips. So that's all for me today, Fit Mama. I could just go on and on and on. I'm going to do a podcast really soon on breathing. I am breathing through this move. I am going global. I can't wait to connect with you online if we aren't connected yet. PM me, DM me. Let's hang out. Hang out in the Fit Mama group. We're there. I am always around online. So see you soon. Breathe through it. It's life. It's exciting. Respond. Don't react as often or at least become aware when you are reacting so you can do a do-over and respond. Love, love, love you, Fit Mama. Love Fit Mama. All the goods. Have a great day. Namaste. (laughs) 